Are Magic Johnson and Rob Palenka failing the Los Angeles Lakers? Yes, that's the question I asked today. Are Magic Johnson and Rob Palenka failing the Los Angeles Lakers? We're going to run down a timeline of all the personnel moves and everything that's took place since Magic Johnson has been hired as the head of basketball operations, the president of the Los Angeles Lakers basketball team. Magic Johnson was hired February 21st, 2017 as president of basketball operations. March 7th, 2017, Magic hired Rob Palenka, who's Kobe Bryant's former agent, longtime NBA agent, was hired as the general manager of the Los Angeles Lakers. In their first move prior to the 2017 draft on June 20th, 2017, Magic Johnson packaged D'Angelo Russell who was the second overall pick in the 2015 draft, who was still only 21 years old at the time of the trade, he was packaged with Timothy Moskov in a trade that was basically designed to dump Timothy Moskov's contract and get rid of D'Angelo Russell essentially after the big blow up in a situation that happened with uh, Nick Young. Uh, in return for D'Angelo Russell, 21 year old second overall pick in the draft, the Lakers got back Brooke Lopez, who was on the last year of his deal, so it was going to open up some cap space. And they also acquired the 27th pick in the upcoming draft that was just two days away. Now, we go to the draft. June 22nd, 2017. With the second pick in the draft, the Los Angeles Lakers select Lonzo Ball. Now, you could be very critical of that pick. You want to consider Jason Tatum, De'Arian Fox, Lori Markkinen, Dennis Smith Jr., Donovan Mitchell, all were picked after Lonzo Ball. Lonzo Ball has only played half of the games. He's been eligible to play in as a Laker for the first two seasons. He's had numerous health issues. Uh, his dad has been very outspoken about his unhappiness with the team. You know, LeVar Ball is definitely going to let you know how he feels. He's not happy with the way the team is using his son, specifically Luke Walton. He's went as far as saying that it's going to be Lonzo or Luke. I think that in actuality, it's going to be Lonzo and Luke. But now, in the same draft, 2017 draft, with a 27th overall pick that was acquired in the trade for D'Angelo Russell, when they got rid of D'Angelo Russell and sent him over to Brooklyn, with that 27th overall selection, they did use that to select Kyle Kuzma. That ended up being a very good pick, a very smart pick. Uh, that definitely a steal at that point, 27th overall. They then made a move with the Utah Jazz to acquire the 30th pick in the draft. With that pick, they acquired Josh Hart. Josh Hart, good defender, good player, well-respected player, good young player. So that concluded their moves in the draft that year. They got Lonzo Ball with the second pick. They got Kyle Kuzma with the 27th pick, and they got Josh Hart with the 30th pick. Think what you want about these moves so far. Now, fast forward through the season, come to the next year, big free agent time. That's what they were waiting for. That's what they were clearing the cap for. They're making the moves for Magic Johnson lands LeBron James, summer of 2018. Meets him at his house the first day of free agency, first minutes of free agency, goes in with LeBron. They sit down, they make a deal. LeBron signs with the Lakers. LeBron's coming to LA. Now, how are they going to construct a team around LeBron James? That's what the question becomes. What are you going to do? Typically, typically what they do around LeBron is you put shooters everywhere. In Miami and Cleveland, you had shooters. You space the floor, shooters, shooters, shooters. Magic and I assume LeBron elected to take a different strategy. They wanted multiple distributors, guys that could orchestrate plays on the floor, guys that were scrappy, good defenders, hard-nosed, tough players to compete and get physical and play tough with the Golden State Warriors. Obviously, at that point, you're looking to compete with the Golden State Warriors who are back-to-back -back champions at this point and the cream of the crop. You gotta go through the Warriors to do anything. LeBron James used to go in the finals every year. We didn't come here to lose. This is how we do it. We're gonna have to go at the Warriors. So, here comes then a question of, a, a series of several questionable moves. Lakers elect not to re-sign Julius Randle. He, he gets a two-year, $18 million deal with the Pelicans. The second year is a player option. So $9 million a year, they do not want to give Julius Randle, who arguably 
the season before, many would say was the best player on the Lakers. Julius Randle played great for the Lakers, scoring, rebounding, playing tough, tough basketball, tough defense, passionate, hard-nosed player. They like to let him walk. Then they also elect to let Brooke Lopez walk, who they could have retained at just $4 million a year. That's the contract that he re received from the Milwaukee Bucks. Now word comes out, Luke Walton and his staff urged the front office of the Los Angeles Lakers to retain Julius Randle and Brooke Lopez. Magic Johnson took a blind ear to those wishes and they let Brooke Lopez go. He's having an extremely underrated year with the Milwaukee Bucks who currently have the best record in the NBA. Brooke Lopez is a big part of that, believe it or not. His ability to space the floor, he's been hitting so many three-pointers this year, opening things up for, for Giannis to go inside and score and do what he needs to do. He's been blocking lots of shots. He's been huge. Julius Randle went to New Orleans, picked up where he left off. He's playing great basketball for New Orleans Pelicans. And at this point, you could make a really clear case that the Lakers could have really used to have each of those guys this year. They chose not to because they wanted to keep all the cap room open, wanted to be in position to sign big free agents. Is this the right move or not? Are they going to ever get another big free agent to go next to LeBron? We're going to see soon enough. Okay, so basically they let, let Lopez and Randall go. They signed guys on one-year deals. Lance Stevenson's, Michael Beasley's, Rajon Rondo's, JaVale McGee's. But basically at this point, you're making the decision. You're going to go into the season with all the veterans and all the young guys. The Brandon Ingrams, the Kyle Kuzmas, the Josh Hart's, the Lonzo Balls. You're going to go into here with them and a bunch of veterans that I just named on one-year deals. Why are we doing this? Got a scrappy veteran team with the young guys with LeBron. Veterans are going to come off the books at the end of the year. Go pursue a big free agent. See if they can make another splash. They're unable to get rid of Luol Dang by packaging another young asset similar to what they did in the, in the Timothy Moskov deal. They didn't make that happen, so they elected to use a stretch provision on Luol Dang, so he's going to count as $5 million against the cap for the next couple of years, but it opens up a lot of cap space for the Lakers to, to spend on free agents. So they go into the year, starts off a little slow, then things get going. Uh, Lakers looking really good. Uh, Christmas Day, LeBron goes down, he's hurt. At this time, the Lakers are fourth in the West. LeBron goes down, he's hurt. Lakers start to slide. They slide out of playoff contention. Uh, Right around the trade deadline is when LeBron comes back, but in the middle of the trade deadline is the hugest, messiest fiasco, biggest story in the NBA at this point. Uh, Anthony Davis, who's represented by Rich Paul, childhood friend of LeBron James, Clutch Sports, uh, notifies the New Orleans Pelicans and leaks to the national media that Anthony Davis is not going to be resigning with the Pelicans and he wants out. He wants he wants to go to LA. He wants to join LeBron in LA. So at this point, Magic Johnson essentially is rumored, uh, these rumors have been denied by Jeannie Buss, believe what you want to believe. Essentially, the Lakers offered the whole entire young core was what was rumored for Anthony Davis. The Pelicans still refused to do the deal. They basically didn't want to negotiate with the Lakers. They wasted the Lakers time. They were real sour about the idea of Anthony Davis ending up with the Lakers. They didn't want to let Clutch Sports, Rich Paul, Anthony Davis win. They said, we're going to wait till the summer. We're going to see what the Boston Celtics got to offer. We're going to get the best deal we can get and make our decision then. So this throws the whole entire team into turmoil. Uh, LeBron's back from his injury. These rumors are going on. Total disconnect. Total lack of chemistry. Guys in the locker room feel betrayed. Young players that LeBron James is uh, mentoring and they're looking up to him. Now they feel unwanted by LeBron, unwanted by the organization. Some guys have a harder time than others in bouncing back. All the veterans on one-year deals, half of them names were included and thrown around as possible throw-ins to make cap money work. Everyone's expendable except for LeBron. There's no chemistry. There's no drive. There's no passion. There's no love coming from the Lakers. And, uh, they just start slipping and falling and falling. Uh, way out of playoff contention as they are sitting now. It's not looking good. It's, it's, it's over. So basically, the Lakers strike out on the whole Anthony Davis thing. They are able to make a couple small moves. They acquire Reggie Bullock from the Detroit Pistons. Reggie Bullock actually playing very solid for uh, 
The Lakers uh, hitting three-pointers, playing a tough defense, high energy, was a nice pickup for them. Then they did another thing which many fans consider a head-scratcher, a lot of people are unhappy with. They get rid of Zubac. Uh, they trade him to the Clippers, uh, and they get back Mike uh, Muscala. They get back a big man who seen as a stretch big. Uh, you throw Zubac away, you get back Mike. Mike's no money against the books at the end of the year. His contract comes off. So you're basically dumping Zubac up to, off to create a little more cap space. Uh, many seeing Zubac as a potential very nice young player in this league. He was really, really playing good basketball for the Lakers this season. So that kind of, you know, was another head scratcher. So at this point, we kind of ran down the moves that Magic Johnson has made so far. Lakers are not in the playoffs this year. Uh, they were riddled with injuries, but a lot of moves have been made that are maybe questionable. Uh, I ask you this. Has Magic Johnson and Rob Palenka failed the Los Angeles Lakers so far? Are Magic Johnson and Rob Palenka failing the Lakers? Uh, sound off in the comments below. Make sure you follow, like, uh, subscribe to stay updated on all of our latest videos. Uh, let me know what you think.